1999, sovereignty over Macau was transferred back to China. And since then, this former trading port has become an international gambling and entertainment center, surpassing Las Vegas in profits. But the continuous invasions by foreign imperial colonial powers in the 19th century had dragged the Middle Kingdom into an abyss of suffering and backwardness, which in turn intensified the Chinese people's yearning for peace and harmony. The resentment against the imperial colonial powers and the sense of historic injustice continued to fester and inspired revolutionary forces within China. The weakened Qing dynasty continued to disintegrate during the Xinhai Revolution, finally collapsing after the Wuchang Uprising of 1911. Having ruled China since 1644, the Qing dynasty was replaced by the Republic of China, which was formally established on January 1st, 1912. This ended over 2,000 years of imperial rule in China. The much-revered revolutionary Dr. Sun Yat-sen was the first president and founding father of the Republic of China. He received his medical degree from the University of Hong Kong and had extensively traveled in the West. Dr. Sun's political philosophy is known as the three principles of the people, nationalism, democracy, and the people's livelihood. Dr. Sun passed away in 1925. His mausoleum is a testament to the great legacy he left behind. It is situated at the foot of Purple Mountain in Nanjing, the capital of Jiangsu province. An interesting example of how alliances were short-lived, opportunistic, and constantly shift between the imperial colonial nations occurred during World War I. Right after World War I had started, Japan and Great Britain joined forces in 1914, attacking and occupying the German colony and port city of Tsingtao on the Yellow Sea. Japanese imperialistic ambitions steadily increased during the 1920s, focusing on the complete conquest of Manchuria. But the powerful Chinese warlord, Chang Zhou-lin, stood in Japan's way. As a result, in 1928, the Japanese assassinated Chang Zhou-lin by bombing his train. Imperial Japan's military aggressions continued and culminated in the 1931 Mukden incident, which was the explosion of a railway track. The Japanese had engineered this so-called act of sabotage, using it as a pretext to invade all of Manchuria, and immediately established the puppet state of Manchukuo with Pu Yi, the last emperor of the Qing dynasty, as its sovereign. In Manchukuo, the Japanese mobilized more than 10 million Chinese for slave labor in manufacturing industries and agriculture. Taking advantage of Manchuria's fertile soil, large opium poppy plantations were cultivated. Known to mankind since prehistoric times, opium is the oldest and most widely used narcotic. It has always had an ambiguous reputation on one hand, it is addictive and deadly, and on the other, utilized extensively in medicine as a painkiller. It is the latex obtained from the opium poppy, which is frequently processed chemically to produce heroin for the illegal drug trade. In 1937, the League of Nations in Geneva, Switzerland, the forerunner of the United Nations stated that 90% of the worldwide illegal opium and heroin trade was in the hands of Japanese drug dealers. Ultimately, it was the Marco Polo Bridge incident in Peking that finally started the full-scale Second Sino-Japanese War, 
which lasted from 1937 to 1945. During that time, Imperial Japan's ferocious war machine not only conquered most of China, but also committed some of the most atrocious war crimes in the history of mankind, such as the 1937 Nanjing Massacre. The rape of Nanjing raged on for three months, with more than 300,000 civilians savagely slaughtered. In honor of the victims, the Nanjing Massacre Memorial was built in 1985 on the grounds of the mass graves with Wu Weishan sculptures vividly capturing the horrors of that dreadful time. Underneath these stones rest the remains of the innocent victims. Without warning, in May 1939, Imperial Japan fanatically attacked Russia, but the Soviets beat back the Japanese and drove deep into Manchukuo. The Japanese losses were enormous. Desperately, Japan tried to stem the red tide, but failed and was forced to retreat. In August of 1939, the Red Army suddenly retreated as well, while propaganda loudspeakers blared, announcing the withdrawal of the Soviet forces. The gullible Imperial Japanese General Staff swallowed the Soviet ruse. The next day, to their complete surprise, the Red Army began an unexpected and devastating offensive keeping the retreating Japanese on the run until September 18th, 1939, when Russia forced Japan to sign an armistice agreement. Just 16 days earlier, Nazi Germany had invaded Poland, touching off World War II. This war, conceived in the minds of two dictators, Adolf Hitler and Benito Mussolini took the lives of millions and changed the world forever. Meanwhile, the slaughter in the Far East continued as Imperial Japan occupied more and more of China and Southeast Asia. Why have the Chinese, who in all their 4,000 years of history have never waged an aggressive war, been forced to fight? To fight and die by the millions because China is land, four million square miles of it, and because China is people, 450 million of them, and because Japan had a plan to use them both. Phase one, the conquest of Manchuria for raw materials. Phase two, the absorption of China for manpower. Phase three, a triumphant sweep to the south to seize the riches of the Indies. Phase four, the eastward move to crush the United States. One fact was obvious. China was to be the giant back on which Japan would ride to world conquest, just as Russia was to be enslaved for German use. On December 7th, 1941, Imperial Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, destroying most of the US Pacific fleet. 2,402 Americans were killed and 1,828 wounded. The attack came as a profound shock to the American people, and as a result, the United States of America entered World War II. As Japan conquered more and more countries in Asia, hideous war crimes, which have been well documented, continued to escalate. The 1945 Nuremberg Charter defines war crimes as, quote, 
violations of the laws or customs of war, which include crimes against enemy civilians and combatants. Japanese war crimes ranged from massacres of non-combatant civilians to horrific experiments with humans, biological warfare, and the use of weapons of mass destruction. Most European nations had already realized their imperial colonial conquests when, in the late 19th century, Japan followed the lead of those world powers, developing their own imperial colonialism and pursued their objectives aggressively. The scorched earth strategy, sanctioned by Emperor Hirohito himself, directed Japanese imperial forces to kill all, burn all, and destroy all. This policy, also called the Three Alls policy, was implemented with brutal force in China by General Yasushi Yokomura and resulted in the killing of millions of Chinese. Most of them were males between the ages of 15 and 60, suspected of being potential threats to Imperial Japan. Okamura was convicted of war crimes at the Tokyo Tribunal, but never served his sentence and died in 1966 at his home in Tokyo. Based in a suburb of Harbin, the largest city in the Japanese puppet state of Manchukuo, the infamous Unit 731 conducted ghastly experiments, including, but not limited to, vivisection and amputations without anesthesia under the command of Surgeon Major General Shiro Ishii. Shiro Ishii was never prosecuted for any war crimes. The United States of America granted him and his team immunity in exchange for full disclosure of the weapons of mass destruction warfare data collected from their extensive experiments. Over half a million Chinese were killed with experiments of bacteriological warfare with bubonic plague, cholera, anthrax, and other lethal diseases. During the Second Sino-Japanese War, weapons of mass destruction were extensively used against the Chinese. Rather than taking Allied airmen as prisoners of war, it was common practice to execute them after the Japanese had captured and interrogated them. During World War II, as the Americans cut off Japanese supply lines, starving Japanese soldiers on remote Pacific islands survived by committing acts of cannibalism. One of the greatest tragedies was the plight of comfort women. These were young, innocent girls forced into sexual slavery in Japanese military brothels in occupied countries. Hundreds of thousands of comfort women endured serial rape day and night in these so-called comfort stations. They came from China, Korea, and later from all over the Japanese-occupied territories in Asia, among them Australians as well as Dutch from Indonesia. Eventually, some of these women bravely came forward, writing about their traumatic experiences in their memoirs. The most well-known of these authors, Jan Ruff O'Hearn, also testified at the U.S. House of Representatives Foreign Affairs Committee about her ordeal as a sex slave, which started when, at the age of 19, she was captured with her family by the Japanese in the Dutch East Indies, today's Indonesia. As Japan continued to conquer Southeast Asia, the war crimes committed by imperial forces continued to mount. The 1942 Bataan Death March in the Philippines was the forcible transfer of an estimated 80,000 Filipino and American prisoners of war 